Welcome back to Everyone Has a Story. We're so glad that you were here. Let's step back in time to the family living room where I am opening my birthday gift from my grandfather. The family urged me to guess, so I guessed and I guessed and I guessed, but none were close. Finally, I remember so clearly pulling loose the bow and watching the cloth sack fall away. The things we remember and why they often create a flurry of other thoughts of times long past. Just the other day, I was talking with the good people down at the Phoenix Veterans Administration about getting some new diabetic shoes, required attire these days, thanks to Agent Orange exposure in Vietnam. The VA, for the most part, is treating me well, and the shoes they provide me are of a good quality. I picked up two new pair to make sure that they fit I walked across the room and it brought back memories of a pair of shoes from long ago, a very special pair of shoes. Clear as day, the memory returned. It was during my first grade in school, in a one-room schoolhouse with eight grades, all under the same roof, just one teacher, and that was an amazing year that imprinted my life in so many ways. My parents were well educated. Mom, a school teacher and an English major, and my dad with degrees in medicine and journalism. Learning at home before I ever entered into public school was a given. By the age of five, I already knew my numbers and the four math disciplines of addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication. I could print and write cursive and read comprehensively well beyond my age. I have always been thankful that my mother and my father encouraged me to always read anything and everything. I became an education sponge early on and still enjoy brain stuffing to this very day. In that one room schoolhouse in Sandy Springs, Ohio, each class daily had part of the teacher's attention. I would often eavesdrop on the subjects that were being taught to the upper class groups, brain stuffing. I listened in on geography, closely following the teacher as she pointed to where the countries were located on the big map at the front of the room. They chatted about division and multiplication. I followed along on my paper. Things of science fascinated me. Grammar was always a challenge for me because I was thinking of how to say what was on my mind and not so much about the sentence structure. My one weakness. Topics filled my head with thoughts of adventure, discovery, and still excite me today. I remain obsessively interested about nearly everything. Others have defined me as a modern Renaissance man. Perhaps, in any case, I have been blessed. But back to the shoes. On my birthday that spring of my first year in school, I received a gift that I will never forget. A pair of six-eye lace-up high-top shoes from my maternal grandfather. The excitement barely describes the emotion that I had and I can still recall easily. It was the perfect gift. They weren't actually my first pair of shoes I ever had. Like most kids in the mid-century rural Appalachia, I wore hand-me-down clothing, a practice driven by necessity and practically borne by centuries of frugality. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. We were recycling when the term was not defined by modern moors. These actually were the first shoes my grandfather, Jess Barber, ever made for me, and they were beyond special. Grandpa Jess was my mother's dad and a product of his era. He was born on one of the worst dog days of summer in August of 1881. The summer of 1881 was historic for Ohio in the range and intensity of heat and drought. It was one of the outstanding weather events in our history. Temperature reached a high of 111 with reportedly many deaths of heat stroke. He lived nine decades and during his extraordinary life he did everything from being a dirt farmer, a baseball player, horse wrangler, and a cobbler. He made shoes at the Selby Shoe Factory in Portsmouth, Ohio, working in many different areas of the factory. From an apprentice job like Heidenden, Stampin' to the upper maker and stitcher. 
As a master cobbler, he worked as a lather, lacer, and finisher. Over the years, he grew into the company and was recognized as the most valuable employee. In those days, in his little workshop at home, he had an area to make and repair shoes for the family and for friends. That's what people did in those days. This birthday gift package was in the form of a flower sack tied at the top with a piece of fancy ribbon. The family urged me to guess what was in the package. Well, I guessed several different thoughts, but none were close. Finally, I was allowed to open my soon-to-be-beloved present. I remember clearly pulling the bows loose and watching the cloth fall away. Two shoes, perfect in every way, shiny and new. I held one in my hand and looked at the sole, polished light tan, uniformly edged with sturdy stitches. The heel was made of several layers of thick leather. The uppers were laced together with round cord laces evenly crossed over and through six holes punched in the leather. Above the heel, at the top of the shoe, my grandfather had sewn a leather hoop to help me pull the boot on. The innards were lined with soft glove leather and on the inner sole a firm piece of shaped cowhide was stamped with two words, for Jimmy. I, I was so beyond proud. When it was raining or snowing or just cold, I had to be driven to school by one of the family members or a neighbor who was going west. On good days, I'd walk the three miles to school. I remember wearing my old shoes, although they were worn thin, or even going barefoot on those walks. I would carry my new shoes, laced together and tossed over my shoulder. I would set in the front stoop of the school and put them on before entering the building. I wore them every Sunday to church, carefully polished and shiny. I loved my new shoes. I slept with my shoes. I thanked my grandpa every time I saw him until I'm sure he was so tired of hearing it. Finally, my mom whispered in my ear, he understands. As the months passed, I regrettably outgrew these shoes. I later recall that my brother Mike, almost as appreciative as I was, got them as hand-me-downs. I recall that they were still fresh and sturdy. And thus, the saga of Grandpa's gift. My first pair of shoes was complete. I don't recall where they went after that. They probably went to one of my cousins and then to another and another, for I am sure they wore well for decades. There are special gifts we receive that change our lives immeasurably by the receiving of them, but no emotion can compare to the recall of the person or persons who gifted us with such treasures. Treasures stored in the vault with our most prized memories to be brought out and appreciated and reminisced. Think about all those special gifts in your life and take them out of your vault to enjoy the emotion once more. Thank you.